The jerry can in this scene is very rudimentary. This movie describes how to create a more detailed jerry can using the basic modeling tools in 3ds Max. If you're new to modeling, make sure you've seen part 1 before you watch this movie. Start by creating a box. You can eyeball its size or go to the Modify panel and enter specific values. This scene uses meters as the unit of measurement. If you're using a different scene, you might want to use different values. Just be careful not to make the object too small. Next, right-click the box and select Convert to Editable Poly. This object is now an editable poly, and many new modeling options are available. This movie concentrates on using the Modify panel. Press F4 to turn on Edged Faces mode. Many jerry cans have one top corner higher than the other. Select the Edge sub-object level, and then select this top edge. Click Ring, then in the Edit Edges rollout, click Connect. The new edge loop cuts through the middle of the previously selected edges, and there are vertices where they intersect. Now you can select this new edge and move it up to start shaping the top of the jerry can. With that edge still selected, click Loop, then move the middle edge loop off to one side. Click in an empty space to deselect. Hold down Control and click the four corner edges to select them. Click the camphor tool and drag on one of the selected edges. The corners look good, but camphoring created six-sided polygons, which can be a problem. Six is an even number, so you can divide each six-sided polygon to obtain quads. Select the vertex sub-object level. Turn on Cut Mode. Place the mouse directly over this vertex. Make sure the correct mouse icon displays, and click to mark that vertex as the start of the cut. Next, place the mouse directly over this vertex, and click again to create the cut. Finally, right-click once to finish the cut. Cut three more times so that all the polygons are quads. As you work, remember you can press Escape at any time to cancel. When you're done, exit Cut Mode. To create the spout, prepare this polygon for more divisions. Select the Edge Sub-Object level, select this horizontal edge, and click Ring. Click Connect to create another edge loop. Go to the Polygon Sub-Object level and select this polygon. Click Inset, then click along the surface of the polygon. Now you have five quads on that surface. The inner polygon will form the base of the spout, but it's too rectangular. Select Scale, then drag the gizmo handle to create a square. You'll need more subdivisions to make this square round. Go to the Edge Sub-Object level. Select this edge, click Ring, then click Connect. Select this other edge. Click Ring, and then click Connect again. You've added more vertices to the square, and all the polygons are still quads. Go to the Vertex sub-object level. Constrain vertices to edge to slide vertices along edges. Now your goal is to move vertices to create a shape that is roughly circular. Scale these four vertices outwards to create a circular shape. When you're done, make sure to constrain vertices to None to turn off the edge constraint. Now that you've created a rounded shape, you can extrude the spout. Go to the Polygon sub-object level. These four polygons should still be selected. Click Extrude, then drag on the selected polygons to extrude them. Next, you can use Bevel to create the cap. Drag on the selected polygons, then let go of the mouse button and move the mouse to change the width. Click to complete the bevel. You don't need to switch back and forth between Extrude and Bevel. With Bevel still active, drag to extrude the selected polygons. Release the mouse button without moving it, and click to confirm the extrusion. Remember, you can press Escape to cancel while you're beveling or extruding. If you've already clicked to confirm the change, you can still press Ctrl-Z to undo. Create one last bevel to finish the cap, and click in an empty space to deselect the polygons. The sides of the jerry can are a bit flat. Control click to select these two polygons. Orbit around and control click the two polygons on the other side. 
click Grow to increase the number of polygons in the selection. If you try to bevel these sides, you can run into problems. Notice how the beveled edges in the corners cross over each other, and how some polygons are flipped backwards. Press Ctrl Z to undo that. Select Extrude instead, and drag on the polygons. To bevel, select Scale, and scale down the polygons slightly. Avoid polygons that are too long, like this one. Go to the Edge sub-object level. Select a horizontal edge, click Ring, and then click Connect. The jerry can's looking good, but it needs a handle. Select this edge and click Ring. Click the Connect settings and drag the slide spinners to move the edge loop off center. Then click the check mark. Go to the Polygon sub object level. Control click these matching sets of polygons. You'll use these as the base of the handle. Like you did for the spout, Select Inset and drag on the selected polygons slightly. Exit the Inset mode, then drag the gizmo handle to scale the polygons into a smaller rectangle. Click Extrude and drag to extrude both ends of the handle at once. If you wish, you can scale along the x-axis to narrow the top of the handle. Extrude a second time. The height of this extrusion will determine the thickness of the top of the handle. Click in an empty space to deselect the polygons and exit the extrude mode. Select these four polygons, then click Bridge. You've finished modeling the parts of the jerry can, but it doesn't look very smooth. Exit the polygon sub-object level. From the modifier list, Select Turbo Smooth to get a smoother mesh. Set iterations to 2. This smooths out the object by adding more polygons to the geometry. Don't set iterations higher than 3, because each time you increase iterations by 1, the number of vertices and polygons can increase by a factor of 4. This can result in lengthy and unnecessary calculation time. The jerry can looks much smoother, but now the handle and the cap look too smooth. When modeling with TurboSmooth and similar modifiers, edge loops that are closer together create sharper corners. In the Modifier stack, select the Editable Poly Object and go to the Edge Sub-Object level. Some options in the Modeling ribbon aren't in the Modify panel. Go to the Modeling ribbon, and in the Edit panel, turn on Swift Loop. Move the mouse over the spout until the green virtual edge loops around the bottom. Click to confirm the edge loop. Place another edge loop at the top of the spout near the cap. Finally, place edge loops around the handle near the corners. Click TurboSmooth and press F4 to see the result.